a single malt from India? You must be joking. That was the expression a couple of decades ago. Also, many people may not immediately think of India as the major whiskey producer. But that's what exactly it is today. Indian made malts is diverse and exciting. So how did that happen? How did things change in the history of Indian whiskey? Hello, Namaste, I am Kalpana. Welcome to the Queen's Cut. I am here to take you through this wonderful journey called the water of life. Let's together venture into the world of whiskey. Are you ready? Pour a drink, grab a chair, let's get started. Indian made single malls have begun to dethrone some of the big names in the industry, forcing the single malt connoisseurs to sit back, take a sip and tip their hats in admiration. So let's take a closer look at just how this nectar of gods came to being and what it means today in the global whiskey market. Alcoholic beverages were always been a part of Indus Valley civilization. Sura, a beverage brewed from rice meal, wheat, sugarcane, grapes and other fruits was popular among the Kshatriya warriors. It was also considered to be a favorite drink of God Indradev. There has also been a mention of alcoholic usage in Ayurveda for medicinal purposes. Most of the people in India and China have continued throughout to ferment a portion of their crops and nourish themselves with these alcoholic products. The two great Hindu epics, Rabayana and Mahabharata, mention the use of alcohol. Also, there are roots of alcohol found in the Vedas and the two most prominent alcohol to be consumed were the Soma, which was for gods, and the Sura for humans. But the real revelry of distilled alcohol, such as beer and whiskey, were introduced by the British Raj. The Indian Pale Al, Scotch and the English Punch, and of course, the Portuguese who brought along with them their wines to India. So where did it all begin? Referred to as a foreign poison in the past, whiskey has been in India since it was colonized by the British. Whiskey has come a long way on the subcontinent before becoming an integral part of the 21st century's Indian culture and identity, taking a spot of being the national spirit of choice. I'm sure we all have heard the name Dyer, but this name goes beyond the Jallianwala Bag massacre, as India's alcoholic industry still echoes his legacy. In the late 1820s, Edward Dyer a small town boy from Devon, England, made his way to India, searching for fame and fortune. Educated in England as an engineer, Edward Dyer should have idly joined the army as his family tradition. But destiny had some other plans for him. Post his marriage, he moved to the East, as was the norm those days. An ambitious risk taker with a heart full of dreams, Edward mortgaged his home and with that money he moved to Masuri, India, where his brother John Dyer worked as a barrister and made a good living for himself and had a luxurious life as a sahib. He always imported his beer from England but eventually felt the pinch of it as the cost of transport was an expensive affair. Not only that, the transportation through the sea route almost took six months to reach India and by that time the beer would go flat. Moreover, with the lack of refrigeration in those days, distributing and storing beer was a challenge. Hence, he helped his brother Edward Dyer to set up a brewery in India. After much research, Edward Dyer came up with a striking location that had plentiful spring waters in a cool mountainous region at the beautiful foothills of the Himalayas. 
and thus the nation's first brewery was established in 1820 at Kasoli. The brewery intended to supply with spirits that was reminiscent to their home to the British soldiers. It was also the very first brewery which produced the Lion beer, Asia's first beer which was an instant hit that became extremely popular in India amongst the British administrators and troops. Originally this beer was known as Indian Pale Ale IPA a heavily hopped pale ale which remained as the number one beer in the country for more than a century Later in 1835 Edward Dyer moved the brewery to a nearby town called Solon close to the British summer capital Shimla as there was an abundant supply of fresh spring water that appeared to him as a slice of the scottish highlands this was the best location for him with the idea of replicating the most cherished spirit dyer equipped the distillery with copper stills shipped directly from england and scotland right from the belting apparatus in the milling the mash tun to the oblong type malting chimneys everything was replicated just as the traditional distilleries like glentered in perthshire the distillery's structure was constructed as the old style gravity system all this was done as his ambition was to produce an indian malt whisky which was as fine as scotch whisky and hence the kasoli brewery was converted into a distillery making it india's first distillery solon number no. 1 whisky is one of the first single malt whiskies which is still in production since 1820s of course in a different form eventually dyer sold the solon brewery to Meekin which is currently operated by Mohan Meekin company where each step of the whiskey making process is still stacked on top of one another an actual mecca for whiskey and history connoisseurs as a matter of fact kasoli is not only the highest altitude distillery in the world which is situated at 5500 feet but also one of the oldest continuously operating distilleries in all over asia with edward dyer's production of european spirits for the occupying soldiers the concept of imfl which means indian made foreign liquor was introduced firmly making it superior from the local drink such as chang which was made with finger millet spirit or urak which was made with fermented cashew nuts whiskey as a cereal based spirit was seen with particular disapproval the reason being food shortage in india making whiskey with cereals meant that the extra grain was used for the whiskey making rather than supplying to the needies due to the continuous poverty in india the use of grains in alcohol production became difficult whiskey had to change its fundamental character to carry on a life of its own on the subcontinent the only solution to this problem was to use an ingredient other than cereal to make whiskey the addition of molasses or gur was the cheaper and readily available option and was a byproduct of sugar production this resulted in bulking out the spirit and became a common practice with many whiskey manufacturers in india it still is the result was an alcohol which contained only 10 to 12% of traditional malt whiskey or a pre-blended scotch now this product was never considered as whiskey outside of india 
India's journey into high-end whisky production didn't start until the 1980s. And a single distillery named Amrut is the company that changed the game. The word Amrut emerges from the Sanskrit, Amrita, meaning nectar of gods, a striking parallel to the Gaelic Ishkebaha, the sabbatic origins of the word whisky. Like its competitors, Amrut made whisky by blending a grain-based mash with molasses. But the company's chairman, Neelakanta Jagdale, recognized the potential for a connoisseur's whisky product and began procuring barley from Indian farmers in 1982. By the end of the decade, Amrut had made their first batch of single malt whisky. Though there was little demand for the product in the domestic market because India had no culture for consuming single malts, due to the lack of demand, they had to ultimately blend with sugarcane distilled alcohol to produce premium whisky named Macintosh, a drink more suited to the country's tastes and demands. Finally, in 2004, Amrut released their first single malt named Amrut Fusion, creating a history. The first single malt ever to be produced in India and to be debuted in Glasgow. Upon testing the waters through blind tasting, the connoisseurs of whisky were inspired to compare this single malt to the Speyside single malts. This first single malt opened the floodgates, decisively garnering accolades and appreciations from the international whisky community. Not only did the Amrut Fusion bagged multiple awards, but was declared as the third best whisky in the world by Whisky Bible. The Amrut Fusion had a harmonious combination of Indian and Scottish peated barley fulfilling the promise of Indian whisky being at par with the world's very best. You can also find a mention by Ian Buxton's 101 Whiskies to Try Before You Die. Amrut should be one in your list before you kick the bucket. Following the suit, India saw a couple of other prominent distilleries making a mark in the global whisky industry, such as Paul John, Kamit, Rampur, all have helped put India on the international map of whisky and are a great asset to the whisky industry for supplying different kinds of whisky for the international whisky consumer. In the past decades, new releases from Amrut, Paul John and Rampur have contributed to a significant portfolio of Indian single malt and have made it a heavily sought after whiskies internationally. And what's making them so different and appealing? Their usage of six row barley, which imparts spiciness, they have been described as fruitier in character than the malts of other countries, invoking the exotic fruits exclusive to the subcontinent, such as pineapples and mangoes. While these distilleries have not only grown their status and have helped India with a substantial growth in the export of their famous dram, but also have helped to create an excellent whisky industry globally, which today evidently is more than a mere Indian-made foreign liquor. Whisky in all its variants has found an unlikely home on the Indian subcontinent. These spirits are a pure expression of our distinct culture, history and people. India, as once considered the jewel of the British Empire's crown, the nation shines brighter independently by gifting the world a new dimension to the Scottish elixir. Now that you know the backstory, what are you waiting for? Let's raise a toast to all the legendary heroes 
who not only made us proud but also made this liquid gold available and possible for all of us. Cheers! I loved creating this episode on our very own Indian whiskey. I am sure you loved it as well. For many such histories, stories and fascinating journeys, be with me on the Queen's Cut. Until next time, be good, drink responsibly. After all, whiskey people are good people. Lots of love.